All right, family, reading chapter 12. Giant humans versus custodians in the known lands. When the custodians returned, triumphant from their war, they found their colony totally revolutionized. Now there was a power they did not expect between giants, giant humans, and angry humans revealing themselves for the years of slavery. These long years of giant humans developing and basing their technology on weapons of war and defense added to the fact that much custodial information was plundered and used for this development and scientific knowledge led to the climax of a race totally forgotten by the custodians. When they returned and analyzed the situation, they knew they could not carry on another war because of the casualties of the last one and all the expense that had been carried out to defeat the enemy. Obviously, they wanted to start an immediate reset, but their pyramids were destroyed and they had lost a lot of power in the manipulation of the environment. They thought and analyzed several strategies and waited to see how the conflict with the humans would develop, but fearful of this uncertain future. Another war was born in the known lands. This time humanity would fight together with the giants against their formal col former colonizers. The fierce battles this almost sounds like, oh, that's what I'm saying. It sounds like uh, Game of Thrones once again. The fierce battles fought cannot be described because it was really something. The fierce battles fought cannot be described because it was really something that generated even fear in many of the other circles. Every day that the sun set piles of bodies from both sides were observed lying on the lands that were now only battlefields. There were areas covered by a vast, and different vegetation that now was nothing more than sand and dead landscapes. The custodians also weakened by their last war with the Anunnaki saw that they lost all control and even feared that later their lands would also be attacked by a humanity with a thirst for revenge. The opportunity to annihilate the custodians also left a great peace for the heavenly lands. Everything was heading towards an imminent victory but something happened in the middle, and this was never achieved. The custodians had no choice but to return to Anunnaki lands in order to reach a new agreement with them. There was not much army left that could resist another war, but technology and the union was immediately taken in exchange for gold. Among other things that we do not know, but that possibly had to do with growth of humanity and the fear of future retaliation. Here it is worth clarifying that when the custodians had to leave to unify against the Anunnaki, they left in command an inferior race called Greys of Zeta, Reticuli, and Orion. They were used to control the Earths while they were gone, but according to the story, the Greys did not agree with the old treaty and the manipulation received. Then they were, uncon then they were unconcerned thinking that the human being would never rebel or grow in this way, much less imagined a union with a race of forgotten giants. These accepted as they also feared losing their lands at the end of the war, even to the giant humans who now had a large army sought to free themselves from the custodial yoke in the known lands. The inevitable happened. An unprecedented war took place in the center of those lands. The two forces used all their potential and technology that they immediately put to the test. The giant humans, or rather the great Tartary, or free energy, also possessed their own ships. Therefore, the war took place both on land, water, and air. Unfortunately, the giant human power could not resist throughout the harsh battles, and not having control of the environment that, that the custodians manipulated. This caused wear and tear and deterioration in the troops as well as natural catastrophes that grew out of nowhere in important centers, although, as I mentioned before this, would mark a before and after in all the surrounding worlds. I knew that if they lost this war, they were also somehow condemning future generations for several centuries. The giants had to escape from the lands since defeat was inevitable, and their death was certain. The custodians would never forgive the giants for having taken up arms and delivered forbidden knowledge to humans, managing to escape where they had entered through the north and south passages. Some humans followed them and also achieved this longed for escape from the custodial yoke. The ancient souls of Asgard, Lumeria, and Atlantis that inhabited human bodies 
started from scratch in the lands outside the first dome known as the ancestral republic and although hurt by a hard defeat they had the hope to grow again and return with new strategies now with two different missions to liberate the human being and to finish with the custodians human beings began in these new lands to connect with the source and understand their true past and importance butler interrupted saying that he had already talked to one of the leaders there and that they did not agree to help us not because they did not want to but because they feared that their entire race might actually disappear as almost happened last time i told butler of my concern for the lands of the republic and also for the lands we had left behind he commented that he doubted they wanted to end up with humanity inside the walls since of all the resets to date this seemed to be the one that had worked best for them besides the graves were also under their control and in turn helped to control the human in many other ways since there was high mind control basic and or fundamental issues were not dealt with or if they were they were easily found and reported with some mental problem immediately sending the culprit to a psychiatric psychiatric facility where they were easily and successfully controlled by other human members imagine if you went back there william and wanted to tell everything you experienced here or the information you gathered if you had time to tell the others they would not believe you and would quickly and would quickly send you to confinement or possibly death itself all this that i had heard gave me many answers that i never imagined i would ever hear but it also generated many other questions there was so much to process and everything was running very fast it was frantic according to butler we should leave the islands as soon as possible he did not even know his plan as usual he kept the strategy until the end we gathered the whole team to leave we were going to leave the lands of folk and leave behind the great Shikai, who had given me the most important part of this puzzle that seemed indes indecipherable, a master key that opened so many worlds and possibilities. The lost history of the human being was in my hands. The boys began to ask me about this talk and also began to look through the book I was carrying with me. Butler also helped me to answer the thousands of questions that arose, including mine between all of us, including mine. Between all of us, we tried to make this as logical as possible for our confused minds while the sun went away and a strange night fell on us, one of the strangest in those lands. The sky was tinged with the purest red and generated a firelight glow. Butler commented that this fire is visible if you sail near the Antarctic ring. It looks like a giant bonfire in the distance. It was something we had even perceived before leaving the known land. All right, family, that's the end. Next will be chapter 13, El Arca, the prosperous capital. All right. Family, we got about... We got like, what, eight, nine more chapters left for this book? All right, I'll catch you later. Be blessed.